What does it actually mean to be a good captain? The strength to protect your crew, the ambition to achieve your goals, the wisdom to lead and command those under you, and not to forget the charisma that you need which will inspire people to follow you. If you lack in any of these qualities, then you have no hope of ever achieving success on the harsh seas of One Piece. An individual who possesses a lot of these characters in abundance is Luffy himself. In the time that we have been watching over Luffy, we have seen him accomplish a lot. From a naive rookie with aspirations of great all the way back in the East Blue to the new world powerhouse and emperor of the sea that he has come to be known as today. Luffy hasn't always been perfect and the experiences that Luffy has been through from the beginning of One Piece all the way up until today have allowed him to grow into a very different person, pirate and captain. Luffy has learnt, seen and achieved a lot over the past 25 years and for today's video I'm going to analyse all of the key decisions that Luffy has made and to consider all of the major major events that he has experienced and the mistakes that he has made along the way in order to answer the question of when Luffy had actually become a good captain. While we can always judge Luffy by his actions and we will be looking into both his worst and best moments as a captain, there have also been examples throughout the series of other characters who have commented on Luffy's potential and his current ability as a leader. The first and possibly most obvious example was Mihawk's assessment of Luffy during the Marineford War describing Luffy Luffy as, it is not his power or techniques, but he possesses some quality that makes people want to help him, and in these waters, that is the most formidable power of them all. Luffy's charisma, while perhaps not the first trait everyone would associate with him, has had an undeniable impact on Luffy's success throughout the series. It is what has allowed him to gain the loyalty of his crew, along with a grand fleet that chooses to follow him even without him requesting it, and then all of the allies that he has made along the way like Boa Hancock. Trafalgar Law, the Mink Tribe, Marco the Phoenix, as well as the populations of Fishman Island and Wano. In order to accomplish all of this, it required action, which Luffy was more than happy to carry out, but at every step of the way, all of these characters were initially drawn in by Luffy's undeniable and overwhelming charisma. Possibly the most impressive part of all of this is that Luffy doesn't even realise that he is doing this. It is simply in his nature to attract friends and allies wherever he goes. The most most apparent example of Luffy's charisma which amplifies his abilities as a captain are the words of belief that are shown by his crewmates. Each of the Straw Hat members have their own personal circumstances and for their own reasons they have each decided to follow Luffy. Take for example Robin finally putting a faith in someone else after 20 years of fear and betrayal. Then you have Nami who entrusts Luffy with saving her from Arlong and also Zoro's willingness to face indescribable pain and even possible death when he had accepted Luffy's pain during Thriller Bark, and lastly, the moment which I believe encapsulates all of this and more is Nami's inability to even pretend that Luffy wouldn't go on to become the King of the Pirates, even when facing death at Ulti's hands during the war for Wano. Of course, there's a lot more to being a captain than just the opinion of others, so let's contrast this by looking at some of Luffy's worst moments as a captain. It's important to note that some of these bad moments may be a product of several things, like inconsistent writing from Oda or actions which are clearly intended as gags which can tend to frame Luffy in a very bad light if you view them outside of the context that they were initially intended. But because I'm analysing Luffy's actions as a captain, I still have to take these into account and to be honest, it's up to you as to how much weight you place on these moments in particular. The first one that I'd like to talk about and which I have made an entire video on is Luffy's fight against Zoro during the Whiskey Peak arc. Luffy's unyielding loyalty is one of his most appealing traits as a captain, and it's a large part of how he had become such a beloved main character. All of that faith, belief and loyalty was thrown completely out of the window when it had come to the Whiskey Peak arc where Luffy had decided to assume the very worst of his oldest crewmate in favour of a group of people that he had only known for a few hours. He had attacked Zoro and even told him that he intends to kill him all over a misunderstanding which Luffy had refused to allow Zoro to clear up. This is without a doubt one of the worst moments 
performance as a captain for Luffy. Since I've already spoken about this in greater detail in an earlier video, I will just stick to the main themes here. The greatest issue comes from the inconsistency that we have with Luffy's character. Only a few short arcs ago, Luffy had shown unwavering faith in Nami despite her betrayal of the crew and apparently killing Usopp. But then he decides to effectively abandon Zoro because of a situation where Zoro was actually protecting the crew. Now this is remedied in further arcs and Luffy never acts in such a way again but a willingness to believe the complete worst about a member of your own crew combined with a refusal to listen to their side of the story and even attacking them over this is not something that you would associate with a good captain. Another flaw which is inherent to Luffy's character is his recklessness. While there is a fine line between reckless and fearless and even though some of Luffy's best moments can rightly be regarded as reckless there are also times where Luffy's actions have directly endangered his crew throwing away any possibility of using a safer alternative plan. His initial fight against Kaido would be one such example where he charges towards Kaido by himself with the hope of defeating him then and there but Kaido swiftly takes him down. Not only did Luffy show that the Straw Hats were still hiding within Wano but he also sacrificed the entire plan that had initially been formed and also made the rebel fighters lose him as one of their strongest fighters on their side. Admittedly Luffy's recklessness has been less of an issue post time skip but pre time skip it was something which Oda used frequently in order to write Luffy out of situations that he would have been able to assist with in order to spend more time focusing on other members of the Straw Hats. It may be more accurate to call this Luffy's clumsiness rather than recklessness but we saw examples of this when he had become stuck between buildings in Water 7 causing Zoro and Nami to have to infiltrate Icebig's mansion on their own or when he was eaten by a giant snake during the Skypiea arc which had forced the other members of the crew to take on Enel's forces without him. Of course this is a narrative tool that Oda uses in order to allow the development of the other members of the Straw Hats but it is unfortunately also something that showcases how Luffy's actions and traits can sometimes be a detriment to his crew. The existence of these negative traits allows for Luffy's growth as a character though as he is forced to acknowledge and eventually overcome these flaws. Something that he does extremely well and something that I will be looking forward to speaking about in the video. When talking about Luffy's best moments not just as a captain but in the series in general it is almost impossible not to mention his actions during the Ennis lobby arc where the Straw Hats staged a daring rescue mission for Nico Robin. Luffy's declaration of war against the world government was one of his most defining moments as a captain where we had seen him advance from his early actions of taking on local dictators with the likes of Arlong and Buggy to taking on influential and powerful pirates with the likes of Crocodile to now finally stating to everyone that will hear that he will take on the entire world itself for the sake of his crewmates. This is one of the counterpoints of Luffy's reckless nature. While it can work against him in the examples that I mentioned earlier, it also allows him to have moments like this where a less emotional person may have simply abandoned Robin for their own safety. Another example with far lower stakes than what we had seen at Annie's lobby but one that I believe is equally as powerful had come during the Dress Rosa arc. At this point in the story Luffy had pretty much come to terms with the death of Ace at Marineford but when he sees his brother's legacy in the form of the Mera Meronomi being promoted as the main reward from the Colosseum battle he refuses to allow it to fall into a stranger's hands. Now Luffy Luffy had spent more of his life with Ace than with anyone else, literally from the age of 7 to 14. When Ace had set sail, Luffy was living with him nearly full time. In contrast, he has only spent a matter of months with his crew by the time of the Dress Rosa arc, and some of his crew members even less than that. Despite all of this, Luffy's close bond with his crewmates, which highlights how much faith and friendship that he has with them, leads to him offering Frankie Ace's devil fruit if he manages to win it. This is an unbelievably significant gesture to offer what is arguably the last remaining part of Ace's legacy so nonchalantly to one of his crewmates is an incredible gesture that only someone like Luffy is capable of. In my opinion, I don't think that this moment gets enough praise as one of Luffy's best moments as a captain. I definitely think that it's an example of Luffy's selfless nature which showcases why he is such an effective captain. Now not all of Luffy's best moments as a captain come in moments of triumph. Sometimes Luffy skills are best shown when faced with adversity and when he is paired up against what seems like an unwinnable situation where the odds are highly stacked against him. In most
moments like this, where no decision seems like the right one, Luffy always manages to demonstrate his decisiveness. Luffy's impulsivity often gets himself and his crewmates into trouble, while this isn't entirely a bad thing, but it is when Luffy and his crew don't have the strength to face off against the consequences of his decisions. Luffy punching the face of a celestial dragon during the Shibundi Archipelago arc is a prime example of this. This action had massive consequences, as it resulted in an onslaught of marines coming after the Straw Hats, and by extension the Heart and Kid Pirates. All of this culminated in Admiral Kizaru confronting the Straw Hats. This was a complete bloodbath, with every member of the Straw Hats being completely outclassed in all regards by the marines. It was only through the timely intervention of Rayleigh and the benevolence of Kuma, which was inspired by his relationship with Luffy's father, which had ended up saving Luffy and his crew. One moment during these events though, which I think acts as a positive for Luffy's character, was his admission that the Straw Hats were entirely out of their depth, as he had commanded to his crew to flee as fast and as far as possible. These words parallel with Whitebeard's actions during Marineford, where he immediately commands his forces to retreat the moment that it seemed as though Ace had been freed, even ultimately acting as the last line of defense to ensure that his crew and allies would have enough time to make it to safety. This is similar to what Luffy had done at Shibondi, but ultimately it was all for nothing, because Whitebeard wasn't able to save Ace just like Luffy wasn't able to save his crew, and in the end, it was only Rayleigh and Kuma which had prevented the Straw Hats from being totally wiped out, and contrastingly, it was thanks to Shanks' intervention which had prevented the Whitebeard pirates from also being eliminated. I mentioned this example because for Luffy to act in a similar manner to a captain like Whitebeard, who is considered to be the king of his generation, highlights that Luffy has always had the makings of a great captain. There are many other moments which can also be used as proof of Luffy's ability as a captain. These are usually moments where his stubbornness, or I guess his unending faith and loyalty in his crew, have pushed him to extreme lengths. One such example is when he had carried both Nami and Sanji up Drum Mountain in freezing conditions, where his fingers and toes were being torn apart by the rough mountainside, his refusal to fight against Sanji during the Whole Kick Island arc, and his refusal to eat any food quite literally starving himself if the meal wasn't prepared by Sanji, had all pushed Sanji into the realization that Luffy would never give up on him, and ultimately is what had led Sanji to return back to the Straw Hats. Throughout One Piece, Luffy has shown moments that are both good and bad in his role as a captain, and while some of this can be put down to Luffy's natural growth as a captain, there have also been clear turning points which have forced Luffy to develop as a character, and in turn become a better leader for his crew. The first of these comes during the Drum Island arc, before Luffy's climb up Drum Mountain. After arriving on Drum Island, hoping to find medical treatment for Nami, Vivi is shot by one of the villagers, who are fiercely opposed and fearful of pirates coming to their island. Luffy is enraged by this and goes to attack the villagers in retaliation, but Vivi stops him. She calls him a failure of a captain for acting so impulsively and trying to solve his situations only through fighting, as she then asks him what will happen to Nami if they don't get her help. This is the first example of someone directly calling Luffy out for a decision that he makes as a captain, and Vivi is completely right in this instance. Nami's situation was critical, and the villagers were wary. If Luffy had escalated the situation, it would have resulted in the Straw Hats having an unnecessary conflict where more of them could have been injured, or as Vivi had reminded Luffy, killed, because they would have just wasted time which Nami critically needs. Vivi leads by example for Luffy and bows to the villagers in apology for the disruption and asks to be let past. Luffy quickly takes this lesson to heart and thanks Vivi while exclaiming that she is completely right before copying her actions and apologizing to the villagers. They are allowed to then enter the island and Nami is eventually saved, but the importance of this lesson is one which sticks with Luffy and even comes in handy in future story arcs. In fact, we see Luffy do this directly in the Amazon Lily arc, where he immediately bows in thanks to Boa Hancock for promising to unfreeze the people who tried to help him. This is despite the fact that she had given him an ultimatum which would have prevented him from leaving the island. By thanking her and not fighting her, it resulted in him being allowed to leave the island, even leading to him acquiring a permanently lovesick ally in Boa Hancock, who had assisted Luffy with breaking into Impel Down. All of this is ultimately thanks to that one moment where Vivi had stood up against him and called him out. The next and final key turning point that I want to cover in this video is Luffy's acknowledgement of 
of his weakness after Ace's death. Up until this point in the series, Luffy had consistently experienced victories, even if some were harder fought than others. The only arguable defeats that he could have experienced were against Aokiji, which ultimately turned out fine for the crew thanks to Aokiji's mercy and his initial battle against Crocodile, who as we know, he ended up defeating following a rematch. Apart from this, the only fights that Luffy had really lost in his life were his spars against Ace and Sabo back when he was a child. The luck of the Straw Hats had changed however, starting on Shibondi Archipelago. I've already covered this as one of Luffy's best moments as a captain, but the crew's defeat against Kizaru and Kuma had kickstarted a series of mental blows that Luffy would face one after another. From being separated from his crew and then learning about Ace's upcoming execution, all of this had led to Luffy infiltrating Impel Down as he was unsuccessful in retrieving Ace, and he was then defeated by Magellan. And then the Marineford War was even more humbling for Luffy, as he was nothing more than fodder during this arc. He retreated from Mihawk, he was thrown around by Kizaru once more, and he had collapsed from exhaustion and had to be revived by Ivankov, and then was forced to watch as Akainu killed his brother right in front of him. The Admiral had then left Luffy on his deathbed with a permanent scar to remind him of his weakness. All of this had taken place within the span of approximately 5 days. This completely broke Luffy mentally, with Jinbei's intervention reminding him of the friends that he still had being the only thing which had held him together. Luffy's recovery from this dark place had given him an even greater drive than he had previously, as he now knew the feeling of what it was like to truly lose. It gave him an appreciation for the risks that come with the life that he has chosen, and it also cemented to him what it was that he was really fighting for. Luffy understood that his actions have consequences, and that without enough strength, he won't be able to deal with these consequences and thus protect his loved ones. So this wasn't just one of the most defining moments in Luffy's life, it was also the most defining moment in his growth as a captain. Let me know all of your thoughts about Luffy's actions as a captain in the comments. Do you think that he has always been a good captain, or do you agree that it was the events that he has experienced throughout One Piece which had allowed him to grow into a good captain? Are there any other moments that I have forgotten to mention which were influential to Luffy's development as a captain? Definitely let me know by continuing the discussion in the comments, and lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next One Piece video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.